She also says that they haven't contacted any other teams or ships yet, and that John recently awoke from a two-day coma. Halsey informs a desperate John that there are no survivors and he should go back in search of any. Subsequently, John succumbs to a fever and rests for an additional three days. The spacecraft docks at Illyria, a mining camp, for the time being because they are still unable to communicate with anyone. While Soren and Lara search for their son, who is purportedly hiding on this planet, Halsey brings Riz to a hospital to have the surgery. Entering the store, the couple gives the clerk money in exchange for information on their son. After that, they board a truck to travel to the correct destination, and Lara throws away her wig in an attempt to cope with her losses. When Lara and Soren finally reach a plant, they discover a dwelling inside. The woman who answered the door claimed the child is now theirs and won't give him back. Lara becomes enraged, so Soren pulls her outside and requests that she hand up the negotiations to him. As Soren delivers a moving address to the women, Lara hears a disturbance and pursues it, discovering a boy wearing a helmet. But when she she takes it off, she finds it's not Kessler. The youngster reports seeing Kessler in the ship before he was hauled out. Shortly after the surgery, Riz awakens. Halsey says she tried her hardest, but there is a lot of damage, and she will never be the same soldier. Quan excavates a grave for Vanak, while dragging his body upward in the interim. Suddenly, a throng of individuals wearing red cloaks surrounds her. When John hears Quan yelling, he rushes to her aid. It turns out that the people in the area believe Vanak should be burned so he can go free and are against burials. John orders Quan to place Vanak in the sky claiming he has no understanding of grief. John is the one who sets Vanak's body on fire after Riz and Halsey arrive and say a few things. As Quan observes the flames, she hears someone urging her to join them. Her realization that she is on a spiritual plane comes when all of a sudden Mother appears in front of her, and everyone else vanishes. Mother chastises Quan for forgetting her origins, and clarifies that she speaks for all the worlds. She calls Quan a guardian and pleads with her for assistance, telling Quan that a monster is near. Quan returns to the funeral after witnessing an enigmatic vision. Returning to Meiki, she is horrified to learn that they are returning to Covenant headquarters. The fleet was recalled, according to the Arbiter, since their commanders believed their mission had failed. Arbitrator and Meiki argue, with Meiki pointing out that they, not the priests, possess the requisite power. At that instant, Cortana plays a picture of the Halo, giving the Arbiter the impression that she is attempting to control him. Meiki utilizes this to give Arbiter the impression that he is to blame for it as it is both of their fate. The Arbiter, persuaded, maneuvers the ship away. The following day, Lara goes back to the store and threatens the clerk with a barbed wire covered bet, until he admits that Kessler was taken by the UNSC. In the meantime, Riz tells John that her battle is done, and that she will remain on that planet, because she needs to use a cane to go around, and is in constant pain. Riz gives John an embrace as he bids him farewell, but John is devastated because Riz is all that's left of his squad. Ackerson witnesses Kai don her Spartan outfit and address thousands of soldiers in a training center on the planet Onyx, where they embrace her as their leader. He's been effective in manipulating her by leading her to believe that there are no more Spartans. Perez is one of those troops. He teams up with a smaller group to use a virus to bring down the Covenant ship. Party leaps from a spacecraft. The Covenant opens fire on them right away, killing a few troops. The surviving warriors are able to enter and as the enemy takes down more soldiers, a fierce combat breaks out. Perez is able to sprint quickly enough to reach the console, but just as she is about to inject the virus, she gets shot as well. She wakes up in a chair, revealing that Kai was doing a training simulation. She chastises the group for their lack of teamwork and runs the scenario once more. Paris defies orders since she believes that adhering to the same strategy will result in their failure once more and this time they succeed in completing the task. Returning to John's team, they soon separate after reaching Onyx. While Halsey tells Lara where to find Kessler before departing the group, Quan keeps seeing the mother among the trees and follows her. John orders the couple to go look for their son, who then emerges to engage in combat with the soldiers circling the area. He easily destroys them all in a matter of seconds, but a larger army soon finds him and takes him into custody. Quan, who is still sprinting through the jungle, dives into a well after spotting the mother standing next to it and is struck by an odd light. Halsey tells her that this is where it all started when she finds her there. Halsey tells them that she spent about 20 years living in this subterranean bunker while they tour the region. She soon gets disoriented, though, and claims the facility has changed. When Quan notices the mother leading the way, she follows her. Hansley trailing after. They eventually locate a lab where Hansley's former colleagues are working covertly on her project. They discovered a DNA strand that mixed human and covenant DNA on an enigmatic structure. Quan touches the structure, and a little jewel begins to sparkle. When she takes it out, they are faced with a star map. She uncovers a light bridge that transports them to an old lab, as she manipulates the gem, unlocking the structure and activating the map's secrets. When they approach the nearly human-looking remains of a scientist to retrieve a small box, the building begins to tremble. As the gang flees, 
trees, they cross over and just as the light bridge vanishes, they spot a massive alien city in the abyss, a priest discovers Arbiter and Mickey in the interim, with the intention of killing them for defying commands, though the Arbiter is able to scare him off, he still insists that Mickey find a solution quickly, Mickey claims she can control the keystones, but Cortana enters the room, and admits she is aware that Mickey is lying, it turns out that in order to get to Halo, Mickey must be with John, Mickey accepts Cortana's offer of assistance in exchange for being allowed access to the ship's systems, Mickey has little choice but to be skeptical of Cortana's intentions. John is taken to a cell by the soldiers in the training center, where they plan to lock him up, but he swiftly defends himself, and takes them all down in a matter of seconds. Security cameras capture all of this, which Ackerson shows Kai. He claims that John is a Covenant employee, and that he is here to take the keystone that Ackerson was able to sneak out of reach when he fled. After exiting his cell, John cautiously makes his way to a computer room, where Kai confronts him. When he tries to explain that Ackerson has been manipulating her, Kai does it by it, and begins to fight him. They are both Spartans with the same augmentations, but John lacks Kai's suit, and isn't using his full power, since he doesn't want to hurt her. Before leaving the room, Kai overpowers John and beats him up, leaving his bloodied body on the floor. At that point, Cortana takes over abruptly, and the facility's computers begin to malfunction. She shows up before John and informs him that she is with the Convenant, therefore he must locate the Keystone in order to get in touch with Meiki, and put an end to her. Subsequently she appears beside Margaret to provide her with an update, and Margaret reminds her of their understanding. Cortana needs to remain with the Covenant and carry out her surveillance of Meiki. Kai confronts Ackerson in the interim after learning that he falsified the training simulation. Kai discovers that John was being honest when he makes another deceptive statement. When Ackerson acknowledges lying, Kai goes to John's aid right away. John, for example, has no trouble navigating the building as Cortana unlocks, and closes any doors that are necessary to keep him secure. After finding Cortana's signal aboard Meiki's ship, the priest gives the Arbiter the command to murder Meiki, but the Arbiter defies orders and engages the priest's guards in combat. Meiki sees her bright keystone amid the commotion raging inside the ship, and she crawls to it, just as John discovers the one at the facility. When John and Meiki's consciousnesses merge in Halo, John begs Meiki to oppose the Covenant, because he believes they will exterminate humanity. Meiki, on the other hand, wants John to accompany her in Halo, so that the two of them can create a new world, after killing the Covenant and mankind. Both of the keystones are released at that precise moment, as soldiers from both sides threaten to attack them, and the ensuing shockwave drives everyone away. While the Arbiter is still fighting the guards, Mickey takes Cortana and flees. Cortana steps in front of the priest to divert his attention as he pursues her. Mickey takes advantage of the opportunity to stab him in the back, and Cortana verifies that she has located Halo on the map as a result of Mickey's conversation with John. After that, Mickey puts the Arbiter's emblem on her chest as a sign of gratitude for standing up for her. As the technicians at the training center follow Cortana's transmission to the Covenant fleet, Margaret gives Ackerson the command to get the men ready for combat. A group of troops surround John in the meantime, but but they defy their general's instructions and depart. The general is enraged, but Kai knocks her unconscious from behind before she can react. Margaret chooses to send another team after the troops that pursue the Covenant are utterly destroyed in a matter of moments. Margaret declares she is prepared to sacrifice their whole army to prevent the Covenant from reaching Halo in response to Ackerson's objections that they are wasting resources. In the meantime, Sorin and Lara do what Hosley instructed Lara, but Sorin swiftly snatches his wife away after realizing where they are. As it happens, Sorin recalls that Kessler had always aspired to be a Spartan, and that this was the arena where they train children by throwing them. But Lyra won't go because she doesn't want her kid to turn into a cold-blooded murderer. Sorin charges in to combat the approaching soldiers, as a group of children enter the ring for harsh training. Unfortunately, the troops take advantage of his struggle to seize Kessler and Lena and flee. John quickly locates Ackerson, and begins to strangle him until Ackerson tells where he has been storing John's outfit. As they leave, Ackerson tells them that Margaret is lying, and that the virus the fleet would unleash against the Covenant is more powerful than they were initially informed. When it's turned on, everything within a million miles will burn humans and Covenant-like. Following the delivery of their clothes to Kai and John, John insists that Ackerson approach Margaret. When Ackerson does so, Margaret just orders her guards to take him into custody. John is able to hijack a ship and travel in the direction of Halo, thanks to this diversion. While Kai commands the soldiers on the mission, he uses the radio to affirm his survival to everyone on the base before departing. John is abruptly enveloped in darkness and informed of something nasty and dark, occurring in a far-off facility by an enigmatic voice. When the team opens the box in the subterranean lab, they find live spores on it. Soon after becoming ill, a lab assistant attacks a colleague by slashing him in the neck. In order to prevent her from doing further harm, 
The other scientists must draw her back. Quan meets up with Soren at the ship in the meantime as he is assembling weaponry to go save his family. An explosion strikes Kai's team's ship as they approach the Covenant fleet's location, sending them hurtling through space. They eventually gain control of the suits and form up to land on a Covenant ship after some frantic maneuvering. The group enters but they hardly have time to look around before the enemy launches an attack. They make every effort to protect themselves, but aliens are constantly attacking and they are running out of ammunition. Margaret says that Halo should come first and won't send assistance to Kai when he needs it. When Miki notices that humans are closing in on them, she asks Cortana for assistance. When the AI declines, Miki destroys the device in order to erase her. John chooses to go save Kai's team, rather than go after Halo out of guilt. After splitting off from the group Kai and Paras attempt to retaliate using the aliens' own weapons, but they are still encircled. As they begin to believe it is over, John appears and uses his incredible fighting prowess to begin eliminating aliens. After eliminating every adversary, John rescues a hurt Paras while Kai stays behind to complete a task, Kessler, Ackerson, and Lara encounter the insane lab assistant in a different cell within the facility, but they fail to notice the eerie bug emerging from her. Quan and Soren find all the guards locked in place when they arrive later. Lara cries within the cells as the lab assistant's body begins to change and extends an eerie arm through the bars. Although Ackerson shoots her down right away since he is armed, other inmates are also changing. When Soren and Quan hear screaming, they follow them and arrive in time to fire down the creatures and save Ackerson as well as Soren's family. Returning to John, he leaves Paris in charge of the health unit and flees while the strange voice in his head is still bothering him. When he gets to the main Covenant ship, Cortana's device is destroyed on the ground but he doesn't discover Meiki. Cortana speaks up out of the blue, letting everyone know that she has assimilated into the ship's system. She informs John that the ship is headed for a collision and that it is too late. John integrates with the AI and smashes the ship's console without thinking twice. Inside Halo, John wakes up unscathed despite the ship colliding. John grabs a plasma blade and heads in search of Miki. Kai destroys a Covenant assault carrier and a Covenant ship simultaneously. She is killed in the process, but it also gives mankind the advantage in the conflict. Margaret gives the men orders to transport Halsey to the facility. Halsey declines to assist Margaret when she tries to reason with John. The technicians begin attacking one another out of the blue, indicating that Halsey has brought the spore with her. Margaret is caught up in the pandemonium when Halsey flees the chamber and locks the door as the crew begins to change and exhibit unsettling alien features. When she returns to the lab and looks over the research, she finds herself frozen in midair. Her neck has a mark that indicates she is also infected. In order to stop the infection until they could find a treatment, the other scientists placed her in a cryogenic chamber. More mutants surround the gang as Ackerson escorts them out of jail, so they start shooting to protect themselves. When Quan is cornered and ready for the end, the mother enters the scene and informs her that she is the only one who can save everyone. Quan is able to flee and reunite with others in order to escape. Because of mother's ability to freeze mutants. Lara shuts the door when she's still inside because she's also infected after everyone has left. John discovers Miki and Arbiter a short while later. At last, the warriors may conclude their conflict and the fierce battle commences. After trading a series of strikes and bullets, both of them muster all of their strength and John uses a plasma blade to kill Arbiter. After that, Miki invites John to collaborate once again through the door of an old building, but he declines. Suddenly, a fleet of human ships enters Halo's atmosphere while a number of structures emerge from the planet's surface. John follows Miki into the structure and at last discovers the machine whose voice he has been hearing in his thoughts. 